AJ is my wife and uh, she has Parkinson's disease and uh, she has had it for four years. The, um, um, we, recent, we have looked around for several options or alternatives to cure Parkinson's disease. And just recently we bumped in, uh, into an article published by some Chinese researchers reporting at least 10 cases. Well, it was exactly 10 cases of Parkinson's disease that had been cured. So they claim with a, um, a Chinese medicine treatment uh, called Shi Feng Shi Chan. I wonder if, uh, and, and I, I know there are some other publications, although most of them are in Chinese, they can easily be translated into English. But um, what do you know about the uh, possibilities of actually healing or reversing Parkinson's disease? So I'm not familiar with that work. And to my knowledge, there aren't any cures for Parkinson's disease. And I think sometimes we get, we're desperate for cures, but it's really, really, really hard to cure disease. You know, whether it's diabetes, there've been three people in the entire world, I think ever cured of HIV. I think about how much time and effort has done it. You know, we don't cure diabetes. We don't cure heart disease. We don't cure very many uh, cancers except with some surgeries. And if you think about Parkinson's disease, 60% of the nerve cells have died off by the time somebody develops the disease. So that's why we've really put a focus on trying to prevent these diseases from ever happening in the first place. But if you're one of the people like your wife who has Parkinson's disease, what can you be done? It is a treatable condition and people can live long, productive uh, lives with it. So the first thing you need to do is exercise, vigorous exercise, uh, enough to make you sweat. Uh, numerous studies have shown that, for example, uh, bicycling, walking, running, uh, even lifting weights, uh, uh, boxing without head contact, dancing, uh, can all yoga, tai chi uh, can all be beneficial uh, for people with the disease. In addition, uh, appropriate medication, I mentioned levodopa is the most effective medication. It can be highly effective for the vast majority of people with uh, Parkinson's disease. And there are other medications and surgical uh, treatments available. So again, I don't know anything about uh, the, this study. You can email it to me at info at and I'll take a look at it. Um, but I would just be mindful that uh, cures are really, really hard to come by uh, and that we should be focused on preventing the disease and using effectively known uh, treatments uh, for people who already have the disease. Uh, thank you, doctor. And uh, we really do appreciate that. And up next, we have, I had Joel, Joel, um, and somehow I lost your, Joel, if you can get back on, there we are. Thank you, Joel. Uh, this is Joel A. Go ahead uh, with your question. Hi, Dr. Dorsey. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation and the passion you have for fighting this disease. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, the question I have is on your one of your last slides, you showed eating well as a way of helping to prevent Parkinson's. My question is, with regard to care for people who already have the disease, uh, can you talk about the evidence of the role of diet and what that diet would be? Yes. Uh, so thanks very much for the question. Everyone calls me Ray, by the way, this Dr. Dorsey thing. It's a little bit <laughs> too much. Um, so the diet that's been shown to be most effective and best studied is a Mediterranean diet for not only for decreasing your risk of developing the disease, but also for people uh, who have the disease itself. Again, that's a diet low in animal products, high in fruits and vegetables. Um, constipation is also really common, as I mentioned, for people with Parkinson's disease, uh, but eminently treatable two liters of water a day, um, uh, high fiber uh, diet, uh, prune juice uh, can all uh, be of great benefit. I think some of the reasons uh, diet is important isn't so much about the food we eat, but what's in that food. Um, there have been some studies I suggest, for example, that milk increases your risk of uh, uh, Parkinson's disease, that a high dairy intake increases your risk of Parkinson's disease. Uh, one of my colleagues did great research as a part of a team and found that milk is more likely to be contaminated uh, with a fat soluble pesticide, this one called heptachlor, a known a nerve toxin that has been banned, but was still being used under a waiver. It was actually fed to cows in, in Hawaii on the tops of pineapple, you know, like the green part of the pineapple was sprayed with the pesticide and then consumed by the cow. 
the cow concentrated this fat soluble pesticide in their milk. High uh, milk, uh, the milk in Hawaii was found to be contaminated with heptachlor. People who had drank large amounts of that milk were later found to have an increased risk of Parkinson's disease. They looked at their brains. They found that in their brains, they had fewer of these dopamine producing nerve cells. And they found the remnants of that pesticide heptachlor in the brains of the people who had uh, Parkinson's disease. So I think what gets me really concerned about these things is that we're ingesting foods, for example, that might have uh, nerve toxins in them, known nerve toxins that uh, increase the risk of uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, so uh, I wash all, all my fruits and vegetables uh, with, uh, uh, well, I wash all my fruits and vegetables since I, I've written this book. I buy organic when, it, when possible. And in the back of the book, there are some uh, gray colored pages in which we highlight actions that you can take uh, to help lower your risk of a Parkinson's disease or things that can be beneficial for people with the disease itself. Uh, last thing on diet, oh, is I put a water filter because of concerns about pesticides and trichloroethylene, a, a water filter, like a carbon filter uh, can also be used uh, to decrease your risk of exposure to these chemicals. Really, really valuable information. <clears throat> Thank you so much, doctor. Um, we have up next, Deborah M. Deborah, I'm going to unmute you now. Please go ahead with your question. Hi, um, doctor. I wanted to ask you about if medicines that people are on could possibly give them Parkinsonian, uh, Parkinson's or Parkinsonian symptoms, because I have a, um, a relative who's disabled and has been on I want to say Rispinan, or it's one of those things to control. It was like anger, but he's severely disabled, mentally disabled on some uh, anti, anti um, depressants as well. And they keep saying, oh, he has Parkinsonian symptoms. But of course, I, I don't, you know, I was like, I don't think he has Parkinson's. And I was wondering, and I feel that these are brought on by this medicine. And of course, he's probably not given the best diet. And you just mentioned milk and I know that's happening. And so could you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, so there are a class of medications called antipsychotics of which Risperdal or Risperdone is uh, one of them. And these uh, medications, which can be quite effective for people with schizophrenia, but are perhaps uh, more widely prescribed than they should be, uh, block the effects of dopamine in the brain. Uh, so they work by effectively reducing the uh, effectively reducing the amount of dopamine in the brain, uh, much like Parkinson's disease does through different mechanisms. And so these medications, antipsychotics, also uh, commonly used medicines for upset stomach, Reglan and Compazine, can block dopamine and produce what looks uh, a lot like uh, Parkinson's disease, giving Parkinsonism. Um, and the best way to treat it is by decreasing the amount of medication, if appropriate, uh, decreasing the amount of medication that they're on with these medications or finding alternative uh, medications that are less likely to block other dopamine.